in deep learning, we perform a significant amount of linear algebra computations. Einsum is a tensor library that simplifies tensor operations. In the previous discussion, we learned that NumPy plays an important role in data processing. We also learned that NumPy is not designed for GPU computations. Syntax-wise, NumPy is not straightforward to use in tensor operations. In this discussion, we introduce EinSum to simplify tensor operations. EinSum is also GPU friendly. EinSum is short for Einstein summation. Below are references used in this discussion. In deep learning, we perform a lot of tensor operations. For example, in multilayer perception or MLP, we repeatedly perform multiplication of weights and input features plus addition of an optional bias term. Finally, the output goes through a nonlinear activation function. The common problem is that before we can perform the desired operation, all tensor operands must be in the proper shape. We must also call the right function name and syntax. Let us focus on the problem of calling the right function name and syntax. This table shows the different tensor operations and the respective function signature in NumPy. For NumPy, we have to remember all these names and syntax. Meanwhile, for Einsum, there is just one function for all these operations. The best part is that Einsum is available in NumPy itself. It is also available in deep learning frameworks such as PyTorch and TensorFlow. This means code built in one library can be easily reused in other frameworks. Let us demonstrate Einsum. In this example, let us use NumPy to generate sample data. We have two tensors, W and X. W is made of values from zero to five, which is reshaped to size two by three. Meanwhile, X is a three by one tensor with all elements equal to one. To ease in visualization, we also show both W and X using the common linear algebra notation. Let us compute the tensor product WX. In NumPy, we use MathMool. In EinSum, we use EinSum. Understanding EinSum notation seems tricky at first, but once you get it, many tensor computations can be written very concisely. Let us try to understand Einstein summation notation, which was introduced in physics by Albert Einstein to write concise formula. Suppose we want to multiply two tensors, A and B. The formula can be written as shown. Using Einsum, there is no need to indicate the summation since it is already implied that twice occurring indices are summed. Therefore, we can borrow this notation in our function signature. We use color to indicate how we reuse Einstein notation in Einstein function. 
let us synthesize another set of data. Suppose x is one by three instead of three by one. In this case, we cannot directly multiply w and x without first transposing x. In order to solve this problem, we use the transpose method in NumPy. But what about in EinSum? Everything is the same, except that we interchange the position of k and j as shown in red. Let us work on some properties of square matrices. Let us synthesize a three by three square matrix. Extracting the diagonal elements in NumPy is through the diag function. Meanwhile, for einsum, for this notation, there is no summation. It simply tells einsum to keep all elements with the same row and column indices. The identical results for both NumPy and einsum are shown. What about for the trace of W, which is the sum of all diagonal elements? NumPy uses the trace method. Meanwhile, for einsum, we simply remove I after the arrow. In this case, it forces einsum to take the sum of the diagonal elements to make I disappear. Lastly, let us sum across the first axis or dimension. For NumPy, we indicate the axis of summation. For EinSum, we simply remove I after the arrow. EinSum computes the sum along this index that disappeared. Another common matrix operation is transpose. We show the implementation for both NumPy and EinSum. Let us demonstrate vector operations. First, let us generate two vectors or 1D tensor. A tensor with all elements equal to one and another tensor with all elements equal to two. Note that both are vectors of shape three, which is different from the earlier example where we have X, which is a matrix with shape three by one. In this slide, NumPy has to use three different function names to implement the dot inner and outer products. Meanwhile, in einsum, we just use one function. Only the einsum notation is changed. Thank you for listening. Before we go, let us demonstrate a Jupyter notebook, which can also be found in our GitHub. Einsum can be found in numerical computation libraries and deep learning frameworks. Let us demonstrate how to use and import Einsum in NumPy, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. For NumPy, we type from NumPy import Einsum. Then we execute the code as found in the slides. In this case, we will multiply two tensors W and X w being two by three in shape, while x is three by one in shape. Then we use NumPy to multiply the two tensors, and we also use einsum to multiply the two tensors. We notice that we have the same result. For TensorFlow, all we need to do is change this NumPy into TensorFlow. Then re-import EinSum. 
execute the same code and we arrive at the same result. Let us try Einsum in PyTorch. Let's change TensorFlow to Torch, re-import, re-execute. But here we will encounter an error. And that error simply says that the Torch Einsum cannot accept NumPy arrays or NumPy tensors. The solution is to change W and X from NumPy tensors into something that Torch understands. And that would be Torch tensors, which is the basic data structure in PyTorch. To do this, let's import Torch first and then use a function Torch from NumPy to convert W into Torch tensor. We do the same for X and then re-execute. Notice that the error has disappeared. We also show tensor multiplication. We transpose in both NumPy and Einsum. This is basically the same code that can be found in the slides. We also demonstrate some properties of square matrices in NumPy. Here we have W of shape three by three with elements ranging from zero to eight. Let's compute the diagonal of a square matrix using NumPy and Einsum. This would be the results. And then let us compute trace using trace for NumPy and for Einsum, we still use Einsum. And we can see the results would be the same. Then lastly, we compute the sum along an axis. In this case, that would be the axis zero or the zero dimension. And we can see that the result would still be the same. Let us demonstrate tensor transpose. We can also use w.t to transpose w in NumPy. This is transpose using NumPy transpose, and this is transpose also for Einsum. Notice that we get the same results. Lastly, we demonstrate dot inner and outer products in both NumPy and Einsum. Here we synthesize two tensors, a and B, both of shade three. Let's compute the dot product, the inner product, and the outer product, and show the results. Notice that this is A and B. The dot product results are the same. The inner products are the same. And lastly, the outer products are the same. 